Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of To All Are One, and today we're going to wrap up our review of Transformers Galaxy. So as you know, I did an in-depth discussion on the first issue, uh, but we never got to issues two, uh, three, or four here, uh, which are awesome. These are written by Tyler Blazinski, and, uh, and I love the first issue a lot, Tyler, if you're watching this, and Livio Ramondelli, who's a friend of mine who does the artwork, so I'm always biased towards him. I love his books. Uh, pick up uh, Kill Lock, which is a book he has out right now. It's an indie book, and I think I have a video up where I reviewed the first two issues, and I'll have to review issues three and four at some point coming up soon, but check that series out. It's really good. It's awesome. Uh, Livio writes and draws it, and it's fantastic. Really great premise with uh, four robots. Pretty cool stuff. I think you'll like it. Uh, but for this, I want to just do a quick summary. I don't want to spoil. We did an in-depth discussion on the first issue, but I didn't want to do that for this one. This video is going to be basically my review of all four issues, and we're just going to talk in blanket statements about, uh, or you know, I'm going to go over things bro with broad strokes as opposed to super detail. Um, but there will be some things that I do probably spoil. So if you haven't read these and you want to, I urge you to go pick them up yourself. You can buy them digitally now if you can't get to a comic book store. And then when you can get to a comic store, you can pick up the physical copies uh, when you want. And so it's, yeah, it's four issues, galaxies one through four. And I guess every couple issues, they're going to change writers and artists and tell stories about different, um, you know, Decepticons and Autobots and stuff like that. So I love that. It's a great premise, uh, you know, for a book, like where they can change things out every once in a while, give new writers a chance, give new voices a chance. Um, I love it. I can't wait to see what new stuff's coming up. I think the one after this is Cliff Jumper, and then they're going to do Ultra Magnus, who's a favorite of mine. So we're going to obviously keep reviewing these books and keep talking about them. So for now, we have uh, one through four of, uh, you know, the Galaxy series, and this is all about the Constructicons. And so in these issues, you have the, the Constructicons, you know, you have all six of them, and we talked about how in the, you know, my in-depth discussion video, how they were on another planetoid. It wasn't a planet, it was called Male X, and it's basically like a planetoid. It's floating above Cybertron or out near Cybertron, and it's like a moon almost. And basically the Constructicons are sent there because they're the best builders that Cybertron has ever seen. After the Three Spark War, as we learned in these issues, um, after the Three Spark War, the Constructicons were brought in to rebuild parts of Icon City. And as you know, Icon City is like a big, you know, capital city of Cybertron. And so they did great work. Like everyone, Termagex, you know, who was the one, uh, she was vouching for the Constructicons, wanting to give them a chance. Wheeljack, who's like a scientist who was not really sure what, you know, to make of them because when these six Constructicons, when they were built, because as you know, we talked about how you know, Transformers are born on Cybertron now in this new continuity, they're kind of just birthed by the planet. The planet, you know, creates Energon, that Energon goes into the planet, the planet uses that to create new Transformers, and then new Transformers are kind of born or built from the planet itself. And that's what the Constructicons were, and they, turned out, are the best builders that have ever existed. And they came at a great time, because after the Three Spark War, they were able to put their skills to use and rebuild parts of Icon City and other parts of Cybertron and rebuild it up and make it look better than ever, you know, bring it to real cities of the future and uh and they they're, they did works of art it was awesome they were construction you know guys who basically came together and built this amazing thing and what they started to do was they learned how to uh, combine they became combiners and so the six of them would join but they would talk about how there's a seventh voice a seventh presence that appears uh, named devastator that comes in and kind of speaks for the group and finds ways to shut them out so when they put like you know hook or long haul or somebody in control of their combined form uh, devastator will come in and take that control away and then destroy stuff and they can't figure out why. And then it makes the other six afraid. They're like, dude, every time we get pulled into the darkness, like I'm in the light, I'm in control. It's kind of like talking about people with multiple personalities. You know, they're like, oh, I was in the light. And then I got, you know, uh, I got pushed into the darkness and something else took over. And when Devastator takes over, Devastator destroys. And so they're like, great. So this thing we built, Devastator turned and started destroying it when we lost control. So Wheeljack and Termagex were like, quick, uncombined, like, you know, detach, detach. So they detach and they're like, what happened? What's going on? So because of that mishap, Wheeljack is like, I don't want them to go back into the field and rebuild again. And Termagex is like, well, I think we should give them a second chance. And of course the councils, there's like an, a, another prime that's up there because it's before Sentinel Prime because some of this takes place in the past. And they're like, yeah, you know, we th what they've done is great work. Let's give them a chance to fix what they just broke. And then after that, we'll find something else to do with them. So Termagex is like, fine, let's do that. So they give the Constructicons another chance. They form together. They give in to Devastator, but this time Devastator doesn't destroy and ends up completing their project. So they rebuilt Iacon City and they did this amazing thing. And now they, they have this work of art, this whole city that's built because of them. 
And so because of, you know, the mental stress it took on them, the physical stress, you know, all the people on the council were like, hey, we understand the sacrifice you made and we appreciate it and we love your work. This is amazing. Uh, so now we have something really important for you to do somewhere else. We have this planetoid called Mayo X, which is uh, harnessing Energon. We want something grand and amazing built there. An Energon factory, uh, you know, a city, whatever you can build up there, we're gonna give you complete control over this and we're gonna send you up there and let you do it. And Termagex, it comes in and says, yeah, you know, please continue your great works and, and do great work up on May X. And then, she, you know, she kind of walks away kind of semi-defeated and sad because she was rooting for this group. Um, and we know Termagex, she ends up kind of turning sour and, and leading Megatron. And they talk about Megatron being, you know, um, the person she mentors and stuff. And, uh, and then Megatron is starting to turn into politics. So it's, again, this is taking place in the past, some of this. But it flashes back between the past and the future, or the present. And that's what I really like. And so when they come to the present, they show all the Constructicons on that moon and they're building and they're not really happy with their work and they're kind of disgruntled and they do combine once and they see how it's warping them and changing them and getting them to be a little bit more aggressive. And then because of that, when they detach, uh, I think long haul or hook or one of them like gets mad and throws like a, uh, like a, you know, uh, some kind of piece of metal that they were, you know, uh, op, you know, working on and stuff. And they were like, you know, forging and building into the, the new city that they're building or the, the Energon facility they're building. And they take this rod and they throw it and it goes through one of the workers. Cause there are other Cybertronian workers there. So it goes, you know, the rod goes right through and kills one of them. And that's kind of where the first issue ends is someone off in the distance observing this happening and going, okay, now it's time to, you know, enact our plan. So that's kind of where the first issue ended, but I'm kind of jumping around all four issues here. But basically what we find out is that uh, that Shockwave has have sent the Insecticons to this male X place to, you know, uh, you know, work on their hunger and their power. So basically, like I said, Cybertron, the planet births all these robots in this new continuity. So the Insecticons were born with a, a disease, essentially. They, be, they were very hungry. And what they learned was early on, they could they could just feed on little things like, oh, we can, you know, grab this piece of metal and eat it. And that was fine. And then eventually they it, the hunger started to grow. And after the, the three spark war, uh, when, you know, the Constructicons were used to rebuild Iacon, the Insecticons were used to clear the battlefields. And they actually went through and ate all the dead uh, and ate their bodies. And what they found out is when they would eat things, you know, obviously when you eat, you digest it and it comes out, you know, in another form for everybody. Well, for the Insecticons, it comes out as a new form of Energon. And so, uh, so that's when, you know, the council and, and Shockwave and all these people, they all had an interest in the Insecticons. And so they're like, okay, the council's like, we're gonna send you up to the moon and you're gonna eat stuff that's up there and you're gonna create this new Energon and it's gonna go into our factory that uh, the Constructicons are building. So that kind of links them all together. But then once, you know, Shockwave finds out that they're up there, you know, he starts communicating with the Insecticons and like, look, I know your hunger is, is now past the point of eating dead things and you like li eating living things now. And so now their hunger has basically made them zombies where they like to eat living robots as opposed to just dead robots. And, uh, and so they are, you know, Shockwave's like, look, we need to enact a plan. We're going to need the Constructicons. We're going to need Devastator for this that, this thing that's coming up that Megatron's planning. So you need to go kind of convert them to our side and make sure that they know that they've been isolated up here and put up here uh, to live out the rest of their existence. You need to let them know that they're never going to get back to Cybertron. Like the council's never going to approve the you know that the Constructicons can come back. There's no way that's going to happen. So make sure you tell them that and let them know that they've been put up there for isolation to you know exist throughout the rest of their time and live it on that you know planetoid and they're never going to get to come back to Cybertron and rebuild cities and do amazing work. Uh, they're just they've been dismissed basically and uh, and that's a, like a project that was made Made up and created for them to get them out of the way. So you need to let them know that so that they'll be on our side, they'll be on my side, Megatron side, and everything like that. So that's what the Insecticons role is, is they're basically seducing the Constructicons. And they do, and they figure out how to get through to them, and they show them that you know, they have been left there uh, to just roll out the rest of their time. So when the Constructicons learn that, they look back at the thing they are building, this you know big Energon facility, and they're like, you know what, we hate it. We, we used to do great work. But now our pride, our, you know, our pride's not in it. Our passion's not in it because we knew deep down that they did send us here to exile us, and that they were never going to let us go back. And now that you say that, it makes sense, and, and it's kind of something we always knew. We just didn't ever want to admit it. And so, uh, so now they're like, okay, Insecticons, we'll team up with you. And the Insecticons are like, good. We only ask for a couple small things, 
And the constructor cons are like, what? And he goes, they're, they're like, go ahead, destroy the thing you built, bring it all down to rubble, so that way you can rebuild something brand new, something you want to create. Make sure not make sure you know now that you're completely free once you destroy this. So you become devastator, you destroy that, but just leave the workers, like don't kill the workers. Um, and uh, and so the constructor cons are like, uh, okay, yeah, we'll, we won't kill the workers. We'll just do damage. And if a couple die, you know, that happens, but we'll, we'll try not to kill anybody. So the Constructicons go and wipe out this facility and they leave the workers. And the reason the Insecticons wanted the workers left alive was so that they could eat them alive. Uh, so yeah, really dark story. I really like what Tyler did in this. It was Oh, it's so dark and awesome. Great way to bring in the Insecticons and the Constructicons, set them up in this new continuity, but also make you feel for them. Like, like I was thinking about that. I was like, imagine you're being built, you know, and it's like, it's like people saying like, oh, I was, I was built for one purpose. So the Constructicons, they were built to build. They're builders so they, and, and, and destroyers sometimes, but they, uh, they go and build a magnificent works of art, great buildings, great facilities, everything. They're awesome at it. They weren't proud of their work here, so they got conned into destroying it and you know uniting as devastator and giving into the seventh personality which is devastator so now when they combine devastator takes over and the other six just kind of sit back and watch it happen and they've kind of let go they've learned to let go and now they can be free as they call it uh they're like yeah we're now we're really free we can build for ourselves you know we're never going to go back to cybertron we can just stay on this planetoid build whatever we want destroy it the insecticons will eat it create energon we can use that to refill ourselves and build more stuff and, uh, and we can just have this kind of cycle of life here. But obviously, that's not where it's going to happen. You know, they're going to get pulled into this war somehow. And the Insecticons are going to be there with them. But then the Insecticons just descend on all these workers and start eating them alive. And it's, oh, it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing and dark because, like I said, imagine if you're born and you have this hunger. I got to eat. I got to eat all the time. I got to eat, you know. And I was just thinking how great, like from a psychological standpoint, Tyler delivered these characters and uh, Levio's art, bringing them to life. Like, this is a really great book. I honestly, like, I, I've been raving about the new relaunch of Transformers since it came out. But uh, reading these four, I think these are four of my favorite issues of the whole both series so far. Uh, maybe it's because I love the Constructicons too, but having this spin on them was really great, making them kind of tragic in a way, but also making the Insecticons tragic. And you kind of just, I don't know, you, there's a part of you that empathizes. Yeah, of course they're going to do horrible things so you're not your empathy is going to run out for them for sure uh, but at this point it makes you kind of root for them in a way where you're like please don't do it like by the end of the book you're like don't please don't do it don't give in neither of you no insecticons no constructicons just do the right thing here and then neither do and you're like oh man so of course somewhere megatron and, and shockwave are happy and somewhere termagex is probably even brokenhearted because termagex was you know rooting for these uh six to to really pull through and overcome and uh and it looks like that's not happening either i mean it did but in a different way where they have to give in to devastator so i don't know maybe that makes termagex happy or not I don't, we'll find out when termagex if uh you know she ever comes back into the story but yeah tyler if you're out there i hope you do more of these with the constructicons uh maybe at some point when you get to like when the series gets to issue 20 to 25 or something, maybe you can do like a, another four or six issue series at that point with bringing them back in. Or maybe they're going to go into the main book after this. I don't know. I think a lot of these galaxy ones are just set up origin stories. So that way, when they go into the main book, it makes sense. And with the way they're printing these for the hardcovers is awesome because they're doing like the first 12 issues of the main Transformer book is in the first hardcover. The second Transformer book has issues like 13 through 18, and then like the first six issues of this series. So, and they're put, so they're putting them in story order, which is really nice. I, I dig that a lot. And like I said, this does take place present day, but it flashes back to the past a lot to reveal the origins of Insecticons and the Constructicons. So I dig it. It's awesome. I left some things in there, some surprise for you guys. If you want to go read it yourself, please do. Like I said, you can pick it up digitally right now while stores are closed down. Uh, but then, you know, whenever stores open back up in your area, definitely go pick up the physical copies and support the series. And let's get more copies of these out there because the better this book does, the more of them they make. And this is some of the best Transformer stuff I've read in a long time. So I really love it. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace. I am Bumblebee, your oldest friend. Optimus, I would lay down my life for you. <laughs>